Hey everyone, this is Jonas from Islandworks, back for a little bit more fun working on completing this car. As this year is coming to an end, I can also see that this car is coming dangerously close to completion. Maybe next year, 2023 that is, will be the year that this guy roars for the first time back on the track. This time we're going to continue a little bit where we left off the last time with installing my remote mounted oil tank, the front mounted oil tank. As many of you know, the oil tank is usually over there in a 964. I have shifted it to over there as they had in some of the race cars for the benefit of weight distribution and also for the benefit of simplifying the system. So I'm going to take you through how I installed it this time and we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Welcome into my other office where some of the other magic happens. I like in my build to mix the practical, what I do with my hands, I see with my eyes and I, I create with the theoretical piece of it, which is thinking ahead, trying to do things in the computer. Uh, this has become more and more of a thing throughout my, my process with building my car here, starting with uh, the episode when uh, Stefan from uh, Lost Boys Lab came here and helped me to 3D scan the car. So as I had those 3D scans, it's helped me to put more and more of the components that I've designed into the computer. And that's helped me to visualize, take away the, the initial mistakes and get further and further. So today we're going to have a little bit of a look at this and also to, to understand how we can finish off the, uh, the oil tank assembly. So here's an example of, of how I can work with the, uh, the 3D models in, uh, in the computer together with the practical things. So this is a 3D scan of the interior of my car. You can see some of the things that we've done throughout the episode. We can see the, the center console where we have the, uh, the rotary controller, we have the, the tire pressure measuring device, and we have where the, the JRC communicates. Uh, there's an ABS device in there as well. We see up here, we see the, the little box that uh, actually is the, the interface with the kill switch and the CAN bus display. We see the, uh, the steering column, uh, and uh, we can see also the, the fuel or sorry, the seat mounts that we did way back, way, way back. Uh, so this is one example of, uh, of how you can use 3D CAD as, as a way of understanding a little bit better what, uh, what you're doing. Uh, today we're looking at this one, which is the frunk of the car. So we have the 3D scan of the frunk. Uh, we can see some of the components that has been designed. We see the fuel cell with the uh, fuel filter and the, the fuel lines, how they're routed. We can see the strut brace together with the JRC top plates. You can see how this one looks. Uh, down here is the ABS mount. I don't have the model of the, three, the ABS, but we do have this one, which is the, uh, the bulkhead the sensor connector piece that has all the sensors for the ABS. And then we get to this guy. The oil tank right so the challenge i have had with the oil tank is is really how to get it to really fit inside the car in a way that is sturdy enough for it to hold for one of the the strong impulses that comes when you bump something with the car and still have a little bit of flexibility for all of the other things so that nothing breaks uh, if we look at this one we can zoom in to only the assembly of this one so this is how it looks uh, we see the thermostat and filter housing, which is probably the most complicated thing I've ever designed in my entire life. I don't know how it ended up like this, but it's, it's pretty funky. Uh, we see where the oil from the uh, engine comes back through this port. And then we have the two outlet ports to the two coolers. Then what we also have is my first attempt at an assembly mounting point. And I did, I did push this one out through the printer, and this has been how I've sort of, in a draft manner, had it assembled to the car. 
Uh, this, however, it turned out super complicated and it's, it's no good. Uh, when we look at how it does fit into the car, we see this. We see that the concept was to grab onto the beam that goes on the left side or right side of the car uh, and then grab on to a concept I had initially with the car which was that I was going to have a divider, a bulkhead here to divide this space into two. I've since then scrapped that idea with, with that divider and uh, I want to do something else. So I want to show you the concept that I developed and, and why I tried to do it like that. So looking at this tank, uh, we want to make sure we take care of the gravity of the tank as well as the, all of the side forces. So these two initial ways of supporting it, we're going to take those away. Uh, so this is what I've designed. It's a strap system that straps onto the tank and holds it. And it's based on rubber mounts. So rubber mounts, this little piece here, it's a little bit dark out here, but this is just a rubber, little rubber console that has a little thread on one side and has a little thread on the other side. So I'm going to base the assembly off of, of these ones to make sure I get the tank a little bit resiliently mounted and also to, to give for, for some of the things that I can't account for in the actual design. Uh, if we look at this, I've designed a bottom strap which sort of grabs onto the tank like that, made out of sheet metal. And then we have a little mount piece in the front that is welded onto it. And then that sits on these two rubber pieces. So this, this takes up most of the gravity on one side. And then on the other side, there is a strap or a mount that sits exactly in the other direction. And this one I tried to, I tried to make this one look nice. So I made it as two straps, also sheet metal. One of them has a cutout for little island works here. So cool, huh? Uh, and in the back, it has these two straps out of sheet metal that, that bolts it together and holds it in that manner. Right? This is how it will look in the assembly. Right? So it will sit on the horizontal surface just behind the, the fuel cell and then it will grab on to the bottom here. And I'm going to section this so we can look at how it actually will grab onto this. So what we see is that we will grab on to the surface back here with these mounts. And then in the front, they will sit in this manner. And now that I've come up with this, this way of mounting this, I can actually move this one away a little bit from the hazard, the, the, the fuel lines there that I wanted to. So my idea was to just put it somewhere, uh, somewhere like this, where I still have space in the bottom to put it, and I still have surface in the back here to put it. So what this would mean is we have the oil tank slightly more in the middle of the car. Uh, maybe that was too much. Uh, so now we have a lot more space here. I will have to put some kind of heat shielding in between the tank and these lines. But I'll, I'll manage that. I'll put something nice in between here so, so this doesn't look strange. Uh, and now when I have this, it's time to, to figure out how I actually get this manufactured. And what I will do is I will take these pieces, I will turn them into surfaces. Now that everything is in the tool like this. So if we look at what I've created here, I've created something in 3D that now is in 2D. And this is actually a piece that I can just cut in a water cutter. And after I cut this in the water cutter, then I can actually turn that into something that I can weld together and try on the tank. Thanks some quick handy people. I am back in the garage now with these, these plates that's going to be the straps cut out. Uh, this is going to be the bottom strap, this one here. This is going to be the top strap. As you can see, the little logo that I 
invent that it's not there. It's because the machine couldn't handle it. So I'm gonna have to put that in there some other way. Uh, I've just deburred these and the task now is to see if my infinite uh, TIG welding skills will be able to get this guy on there. So I'm going to lap it just a little bit like this and then try to melt it together. This is the idea. I'm going to hold it like this. I'm lapping it over just a little bit there. This plate is three millimeters. This one is one millimeters. So this is tough. I'm going to heat a lot on this side first and then see if I can kind of populate that over to, to the other guy here. Okay, here goes. Okay. Okay, so I got a little mini notch there. Now that I have it like this, I can align it and see that I'm happy with that. It looks like I got it pretty good in the bottom there in terms of alignment. So I'm going to continue welding a bit. It's really tough because this one is thick and this one is thin. And I'm kind of like working the heat on this side a little bit. And then I'm just moving it up a little bit, moving it up a little bit, moving it up a little bit to try to get it to, to populate in between them. Uh, I don't want to use the, the, the stick because I'm so bad at that. Uh, so I'm going to put it down here and uh, just see if I can get it done. Take two. Here it goes. This, this thing with TIG welding is, uh, yeah, I'm getting just a little bit better for every time I do it, but man, is it difficult. Uh, with a little bit of grinding, it's, yeah, I wouldn't even call it decent, but it's, it's smooth at least. Uh, I did make two pieces of every one of these pieces. So I'm gonna use this for fitting, and then I might go to a very good friend of mine and ask him to do this in a way that it actually looks decent. But anyway, this is well enough for testing. Let's try it on. Okay, so a little bit of tinkering here and there. I have the mount down there. Uh, don't judge me for my welding. I will get some help and get it done really nicely since I have another set. Uh, I need to, to do a little bit more bending here. It's not completely flush. Of course, I'll need to adjust it so that I see that it points in the right direction. You can see that I put the other strap on there as well. So now, now it looks like the 3D model did, right? Okay, so up here in the front, we need to now compare how the reality looks to the, the 3D model we had. Uh, so I have put a tape on top of, of the car body here and I've marked where the two spots should be in the 3D model. Uh, I can't do that down here, it's too, too difficult, but I, I put them like this. So let's lift this guy in there. Uh, trick now is I want to feel that the rubber is against here in the back where it's supposed to be and then position it against where it was supposed to be here in the front and it seems like the model is maybe a little bit different than what it was supposed to. Uh, this is the difference. So as with all new designs, there are challenges. We got the thing in, it sits in the two mounts there. It does not sit in the two mounts in the back just yet. Uh, and with two mounts alone, it is way too wobbly. This, this doesn't work at all. Uh, so I wonder how much better it gets with the two mounts there. I'm gonna mark up where they're supposed to be and uh, they're supposed to be just about there 
and attach them and then I see if I need to stiffen this somehow with maybe a third mount. Let's get that. Sometimes I get a little bit ahead of myself and I, I did the drill the holes, assemble everything, played around with it and figured out that this, this tank is way, way too flexible. Uh, if you take your hand on the top of it, it, it just moves, moves a lot. Uh, and that was when I had the two mounts in the front pinned down and I had one in the back. Um, so, so as I've been installing them in the back, I've, I've done a little bit of an improvement to try to limit the movement. Uh, these little rubber things, this just might turn into a bad idea in the end, I don't know. But what I did was I, I created a collar because I, I, what I needed initially was a little distance here. So this one pushes the, uh, the thing out just three millimeters like that because I saw that I needed a distance. And as I did that, I created this one as a little collar. Uh, collar. Um, so you put the, the rubber inside of this one and then this one moves it out and then it also provides like a backstop on the outside. It's, it's very tough, this one. This is carbon fiber enforced nylon. Uh, it takes up to 90 uh, degrees centigrade, so it will stand for the heat as well. Uh, so here is the back. And you can see that I've, I've actually put this one on one of them. So it creates this three millimeter distance and it also acts as a color. So I'm, I'm gonna see now that I have all four mounts and this color on both of them here in the back if that limits the flexibility to a reasonable amount. We have it in there. Looking good. Looking like it's supposed to sit there. Uh, all four mounts now are assembled, tightened firmly, and we have these, these reinforcement collars on both. Looking in the back, see if I can get in there. Yeah, it's the same there. And the stiffness, if we look, stiffness in this direction. This is what I wanted it to be. Just move just a tiny bit to take the vibrations off so they don't propagate and give a little bit of slack for the hoses. Uh, this, however, is no good. Look at this. Yeah, so that, that won't work at all. And you can see it's, it's moving within the, the color. So they're like extruding and compressing the, the rubber. So as I'm potentially approaching what could be a failure here, I, I look at myself and I'm thinking, how, how did I think this was going to work? Uh, of course, the weight of the tank is all on the bottom because that's where all the, the oil is. The oil is going to come up to, to somewhere, somewhere here, this level as it's running. However, all the hoses are going to strap into here. So two coolers is going to go in this way. The other two coolers is going to go up that way. And this guy here, the big one, the AN16, that's where the return from the engine is. So, so this, uh, this is going to get some tension. Uh, before I kind of give up on this concept, I have two kind of backups. The first backup is just, I'm going to try a rigid mount. This is just for test purpose. This is plastic. I just printed this. Uh, so I'm going to replace one of two of these, so it's only half uh, resilient mounted. Uh, this is just for test sake to see if it works. If that's not going to work, uh, it's going to have to be strapped somewhere up here. Because if, if it is strapped here, then the whole problem is solved. It's just that it's not so easy. And this little tinky toy turned into that. And if I move the tank up here, it's very, very sturdy now. The shaking is me because I'm, I'm trying to apply force in the top. What I haven't told you is I've cheated really a lot. I don't know that this is a very good idea, but what I've done is I installed the hoses to the coolers. So, of course, the hoses to the coolers, they will go to two in each end. So they'll sit there and it's clamped there. So naturally, this one becomes 
very stable now all of a sudden. Uh, I'm not sure how good of an idea this is. Uh, it works stationary in the garage, that's for sure. It's super stable now because this is uh, this is two AN10 uh, hoses. Uh, but of course there's a risk that, that you drive with this and they, they come loose or, or something something bad happens. Uh, so I think I might need to take a little tie break on this, regroup a bit. Moving on, as I contemplate my sins as a designer, I'm going to let that be for a while and I'm going to try to finish the last piece of today, which is something called a catch tank. So this one comes from Nuke Performance. It's pretty cool. A uh, little carbon fiber on the side there. Uh, relatively lightweight. Uh, this one is something that, that you need to have once you have one of these tanks. Uh, and something that I've never had before. Actually, there's a lot of things in here I've never had before. So, so that's, that's no joke. Um, the reason you need to have something called a catch tank is that inside of this oil tank it's going to be a really full-on tornado of oil just swirling around and, and you need to air or communicate this, this chamber with the, the outer atmosphere otherwise this is probably going to blow and it's not going to keep tight and then it's not going to go well. Uh, and what I'm going to use, what I'm thinking to use, and happy to hear your advice on this from the people that know better than me, is to air this into a catch tank. So a catch tank, this is, this is just a container, no, nothing else, uh, with two inlets. So you have one inlet that I'm going to connect to the tank here. Then I have another spare inlet that I can put something else into. And then you have an outlet that just has a little filter on it. If I open this one, there's this little filter there and inside of this one there's a little divider as well. So the concept is that you just put a hose from this guy into this guy. So if this one splashes a lot, the drops that come out of the, the air vent here on the top, they will go through a hose and they will collect in this one. Uh, so after a while you can t take up a dipstick here. You can look and see how much oil you have in it. And, and then you can put it back and then you can be happy and continue running. What I'm thinking then is that this guy should go quite close to this guy. Uh, I could put it behind, I could put it in front and so on. But I'm thinking it should go exactly here. It's not heavy, so I can, I can really put it anywhere. Uh, I have a nice little mount just there that used to be something else in this car. I have the bar here. So I'm going to go back to my 3D scans and see if I can find a way to attach this one here. If I do so, then I can just pull a little hose from here to there uh, and see if, if, if that does the job. So coming back into the world of 3D where everything is magic and cool and all that, uh, we do see the same thing as we saw in, in the real world, which is an even cooler place to be. Uh, which is the, the, the oil tank and all the stuff, and then we have the catch tank here just sitting there in midair. Uh, we see the assembly points that we were discussing just before, which is the strut brace and the little thread that hole that is just here next to the suspension tower. So we need to build a bridge here to, to connect these two and put something there that we can hang the, the tank on. So. As I do things like that, I, I try to just start with what are the anchor points. In this case, the strut brace up here. We have the, the tank and then the, the threaded here. You start with just the anchor points. You validate that those points are the right points in, in your model. So I can do that here. I can see that, yeah, you know what? These, these things here, they will actually fit the, the, the model. Once you have done that, you can spend hours and hours and hours and try to satisfy your need for something that, that looks cool and that is actually manufacturable. And this is what I ended up in this case. So it's something that bolts down on one side. It's something that grabs on on the other side on, on a longer surface. And then there's two straps that go around the actual catch tank. 
that are bolted from the back. And this, this looks like a spaceship, or as someone on Instagram said, a very spacey coffee mug holder. Uh, it does. Uh, the real world will tell me if this actually works and if this is sturdy enough. It looks pretty good, I think. Um, it's not sturdy enough, so it will have to be a little bit... It's, it's pretty sturdy. It is. Uh, but I will have to do something else, maybe, maybe support a little bit further down or just change this one to a proper clamp rather than this, this hook that I have there. But food for thought. Yeah. And as we validated this one and kind of saw the things that we need to tweak on this one, I also wanted to look at an alternative and the alternative, that design would sit on the reinforcement strut that comes from my roll cage up to the, uh, the suspension mount. Um, so it would sit on the side, so it's got some little benefits with, with being up there. Uh, if we look at what the actual thing looks like, it looks, uh, it looks quite odd. Uh, it, it was a little bit of a challenge to design this because the, the bar that the, uh, the suspension tower is reinforced with, this one is inclined in two different directions and I wanted the can to sit straight, but I, I worked it out. It becomes two pieces uh, and they come together and they're bolted together and it would look like this in the car. So take two, second position. Got it in there. It sits sort of parallel with the uh, the tank. Uh, gives me a little bit the feeling that it's supposed to sit back there. However, it is a little bit further back. So I'm not completely convinced yet. Happy to hear any comments you have. Uh, the mount will be very good in the end. Uh, it's going to be a different material. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit sturdier. And then there's going to be a little hose under it with a little valve. So you can empty the tank without having to remove the tank. And here we are at the end of today's exercise. Having done up most of the stuff to get the oil tank here in the front. This thing with moving the oil tank to the front of the car is worth about 1.5% weight distribution towards the forward piece of the car. Which is good since this car is going to be very light in the front with all the stuff I removed. So that, that's all good. It is, however, the most technically complicated piece of this entire build. I've, I've really spent a lot of head scratching on this. Uh, but I think we got it there. Uh, there is a lateral brace still missing on the top of the tank. It's either going to go in the front or it's going to go here on the side. But I will anchor the top of the tank to the side so it doesn't move as much as it does right now. And it will not be dependent on the hoses to keep it still, of course. Uh, some decisions still to be made is the catch tank going to go here in the front exposing this this very nice piece of nuke performance jewelry or am i going to put it back here making it look maybe a little bit more integrated haven't really decided on that i did also get a little bit of help from Aximec with etching oil onto the top of the filler cap just for the sake of aesthetics making it look complete we also etched island works into the the top of the uh, uh, the colors there to, to hold it uh, could have been a little bit stronger there, but I think it looks good in the end. Uh, happy to have come this far. Next step is going to connect this tank back to the engine and figure out how we actually get the power plant running. And I will catch you then.